Chapter one of The Archaeologist and the Spinster. This book comes out in February of next year, 2023. I'm super excited to read the first chapter to you. Yorkshire, England, 1794. Looking down at the carpet, Phineas knew this time no excuse would get him out of trouble. He pushed an unruly strand of hair out of his eyes as he focused on the governess's feet. Mrs. Crandall's tapping foot filled the sullen silence of the schoolroom. A governess shouldn't be allowed to wear black pointed shoes. It made her all the more sinister, and Phineas was convinced the woman hated him. What do you have to say for yourself, young man? The snarl erupting from her throat made Phineas think of an evil witch out to punish children for little bouts of joy. His shame wasn't for the trouble he was in. It was more an issue of having to tell his father what he had done. He didn't want to see the disappointment upon the Earl's face, as he admitted to stinking, sneaking another pamphlet on the Valley of the Kings into the pages of his Bible. Gathering his courage, Phineas wasn't sure his prepared speech would work. Even though he'd spent most of the night repeating it in his... Oops. Gotta get just one page turned. Repeating it in his head when he should have been sleeping. It was possible Miss Crandall would not be amused. With a serious tone and a forced look of consternation, Phineas knew this. his time had come. He had two choices. He could admit his guilt and suffer the consequences, or give the prepared speech and quite possibly find himself immersed in the ancient world of pharaohs. It was all in the presentation. With perfect posture for a boy of 10 years, he enunciated each word with perfection. I thought it was compa I thought it was a companionable article relevant to the study of Joseph and his adventures in Egypt. For all we know, the Bible could be missing important information that would lend greater understanding to the reader. It is very possible Joseph from the Bible is buried in the Valley of the Kings, and one day I will discover his tomb. What do you mean? You cannot possibly believe you will go to Egypt? Mrs. Crandall's stunned expression worried Phineas. He had said something wrong. I most certainly do, Mom. I will be the world's greatest archaeologist. You will one day read about me in the London Times. You are quite cheeky for your age. Phineas put his hands behind his back, clutching the article, which Miss Crandall so thoroughly disapproved. I apologize, Mom. I did not mean to speak out of turn. Yet you did, and you have neglected your study of the Word of God. Phineas tried to soften his face as his brothers chuckled behind him. They weren't helping his cause. Since he was finished with his explanation, Phineas gave a proper bow and quickly stuffed his article on Egypt into his waistcoat before retaking his seat. He glared at each of his brothers to show his displeasure at their lack of brotherly support. Miss Crandall stepped to her desk, her pointed shoes clacking as she crossed the wood floor. Phineas watched as she took hold of her pen and dipped it in the inkwell, gathering more of the black liquid than was needed. The subsequent scratching of her quill made his heart race. He didn't know the exact words upon the paper, but he was certain the Earl would not be happy with him. It took Miss Crandall less time than he'd hoped to finish scribbling out her missive. Her movements were quick and ink splashed across the desk as she dropped the quill on the blotter. She threw a dusting across the page to dry the ink and then folded it and sealed the letter with a loud thump of the stamp so he could not look upon her words. He'd been in trouble enough times to know when he wasn't wanted in the schoolroom, so Phineas stood and held his hand out for the letter. Miss Crandall placed it firmly in his hand. With the distasteful task behind her, she straightened her posture and looked at him with the same annoyance she gave to spiders. You will take this to Earl Grafton. Yes, Mom. When you return to lessons, it should be to apply yourself in the proper way. I will not have disobedient pupils in the schoolroom. Taking the letter, Phineas left his brothers with the governess as he walked slowly toward the den, dragging his feet resulting in a shuffling noise. It was better to dawdle than to rush to a punishment. His hand shook as he knocked upon the large mahogany door, reminding him of the previous visits he'd made to the den in this exact manner. At the sound of his father's voice, he entered with the letter stretched out before him. This was the third time in a month he'd been caught looking at magazines or books on archaeology. 
He worried his father would take them away and send him to his bedchamber without supper. Rocking from side to side, Phineas waited as the sound of snapping wax sill of a snapping wax sill echoed through the room. Silence met his ears and his heart pounded, causing sweat to pool on his forehead as his father slowly opened the letter. After a short duration that seemed more like an eternity, the paper ruffled within the Earl's hands as he placed the letter upon the desk. Phineas, I am disappointed in you. But father, I only wanted to read about the Valley of the Kings. It is more exciting than reading about the Bagats. His father's lips twitched and it looked as if he was going to laugh, but he didn't. Clearing his throat, the Earl tilted his head and lifted his eyebrows to show he was serious about the conversation. The Bagats? You know, the really boring part of the Bible where they talk about people living and dying and they have names like Shem and Afraxad. I only thought it would be more interesting to read about archaeology instead. It is practically the same thing. The Bible is an important part of your education. Your mother and I cannot have a heathen running around Primrose Hall. Phineas forcibly threw himself into a chair as he glowered at his father. His nose scrunched up as he considered spending more time than necessary on learning about religion. The only one who likes learning the Bible is Gilbert. Miss Crandall thinks he is intended for the church. His father walked around the desk and sat in the chair opposite him. What does Miss Crandall think about your future? Phineas's lips quivered. He didn't want to admit that the governess had little hope for him. She told him he would be a burden on his family and drain the Earl's coffers with his wild ways. But Phineas didn't want to tell his father that. It was best to keep such information from leaking out and forming unwanted ideas about his behavior. Folding his arms across his chest, he looked to the ground. Father, why is it so hard for adults to understand my interest in Egypt? I want to live there when I am older. His father leaned forward and placed a hand on Phineas's arm with an inkling of understanding. I believe you will, son. Now show me this article and let's look at it together. Extracting the article out of his waistcoat, Phineas handed it to his father, praying it, would become, it wouldn't become kindling for the fire. There is much more to learn about the Valley of the Kings. This is but a snippet of information. Flipping through the pages, his father took a quick scan of the contents and handed it back to Phineas. I want you to make a promise to me, and then I will make one to you. Sitting up in his chair, Phineas locked eyes with his father. The Earl didn't make promises lightly. What do you have in mind? You must promise to do your lessons with Miss Crandall and not get distracted by articles of this nature. Phineas hesitated, running his hands over the pages filled with hieroglyphs and illustrations of pharaohs. He wondered if his trust in his father had been misplaced. His life's dreams were within the hollowed pages of the article. It took him less than a minute to wipe the doubt from his mind. This was a significant promise to make, but he trusted his father. I promise. Very well. Then I promise to spend one night a week searching through articles and books with you to help you learn everything you can about archaeology and the ancient world. This was more than Phineas had expected. He was simply hoping not to be punished for behaving improperly during lessons. You truly promised this. Yes, Phineas, I do not want another letter like the one I received from Miss Crandall today. If you can keep your end of the bargain, then I will make certain you have the knowledge you need to travel the world when you are of age. This was more than Phineas could have expected. But even the knowledge of his father preparing a way for him to travel was not outshined by the knowledge that his father planned to set time apart from his duties to explore books on archaeology. With this promise between them, Phineas knew he could vow to behave during lessons. I will do as I am told, and I will learn every begat in the Bible, I promise. With a written response from his father, Phineas went back to the schoolroom and sat next to his brother's. He would memorize the biblical passages Miss Crandall was impressing upon him and keep the talisman of his father's promise to stop all temptation to pull out another article during lessons. Anyway, this book releases in February 2023, and it's the third in a series of the Fernley family. The first book is Earl Grafton and the Traitor. And the second book is Mr. Fernley and the Lady. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.